Most people currently know me as being in a super healthy and loving, successful relationship. I know me and my boyfriend are so cute. But what a lot of people don't know and what I don't really share online is all the traumatic situationships and failed relationships that I've been through and all the experiences that I have learned about dating in New York City, which are really harsh experiences. I literally go to relationship therapy now to heal all of that. I am a super naive, like hopeless romantic, and I still feel like I am sometimes but especially before I ever even started dating in New York I literally didn't know anything I just knew what I was watching on TVs what I saw on social media what I was reading in books and those are all like super romanticized versions of romantic relationships I was like one of those really hardcore shippers like I love Styles and Lydia from Teen Wolf I love watching all those TV shows like the Vampire Diaries and I got too attached to the couples as if they were real people like it was pretty bad so knowing that you could probably guess that my perception on relationships and the reality of dating was probably a little bit off and if you've never dated before or you haven't experienced that much before then yours might be too I am here to make sure that you guys kind of understand what you're getting yourself into if you've never dated or you're going to date but I will say that I still love the concept of dating I know there's a lot of discourse about modern dating and Gen Z dating and how bad and ruined it has become I think there's still a lot of good people out there there's still a lot of secure partners you can still build a healthy relationship I think even more so now that people are becoming more aware and mental health is such a big thing dating can even be better now than before so buckle up because I'm going to tell you guys the 10 brutally honest dating rules that I have learned while I was dating in case you don't know what to do about dating and you're kind of scared to go into it then don't worry because your online bestie is here and I got you <laughs> Hi, if you're new here, I'm Charlize Chu, the host of the Online Bestie Podcast, where I talk about all things self-improvement, wellness, relationship advice, so we can all be the best version of ourselves. And if you want to hear more episodes like this, then make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube and rate and review on Spotify. Number one, it's not a meet cute, it's hinge. We as a society need to accept the fact that these dating apps are actually working. These are the new meet cutes. If you're really into rom-coms and TV shows and all of that, then you are expecting this super romantic, like bump into a cafe type of meeting with your partner. But that's just realistically not how it is anymore. And that's totally fine. We need to be more open-minded to the fact that you can meet someone and have a really amazing relationship online. Because I have a lot of friends now who have found their partner through dating apps. I feel like a lot of people are kind of like, yeah, we met on a dating app, but they don't want to actually say it because they feel like they're going to get judged. But like, why? Because everybody is literally using a dating app now. Even before I moved to New York City, I literally was always like, I will never go on a dating app. Like, I'm never going to go on a date. If I never did that, then I would never get the experiences that I did. I would never learn so much about dating. Obviously, you need to make sure you are having safe rules for your dating apps like you make sure people know where you are and i'm not saying that you can't meet your partner naturally i mean that's really possible a lot of people are still doing that but just don't be super disappointed that you didn't or think that if you did meet someone on a dating app like it's not going to be as romantic and cute Number two, as a girl, you need to make a move. This may seem a bit controversial and I understand it. A lot of girls, you know, they say I don't chase, I attract. I always wanted the guy to chase me. And even like watching movies and stuff, you just see the guys pining over the girls all the time that you're like, I want that. Like High School Musical, the way Troy literally like was doing everything he could for Gabriella. Sometimes you just need to be the one to make the move because I just feel like life is so short to be waiting around for a guy to make a move sometimes because you also don't know the circumstances maybe the guy is afraid to make the move and you have the upper hand and for me I personally like telling the guys that I like that I like them as soon as I know that I have feelings for them if they don't like me back I don't have to keep wasting my time for that I used to feel so guilty when I would tell guys that I like them because I felt like I was doing myself a disservice I was like oh my gosh am I putting more energy into this like it doesn't have to be like that unless you make it like that you can just tell someone that you like them because you are bold and confident and you know your worth and if you're constantly trying to play that hard to get girl and get the guy to pine over you and chase you you are sometimes not always but sometimes attracting the wrong type of guy it's the guy who only likes hard to get women and once they have you 
they completely are unattracted to you anymore and they feel turned off. I have felt that so many times. Like I used to always be like, oh my God, I need to be hard to get at all times 24 seven in order for my man to like me. You know, even when I was in a full on relationship at one point, I felt like I had to play hard to get. If your boyfriend is a secure person, you don't have to play hard to get with him, okay? You should feel love and affection all times and feel secure no matter how you are with him. Number three, a good person doesn't mean they're a good partner. When I picture like a bad person, I picture like a literal terrible human being would literally steal candy from a baby you would never even want to be friends with you would never want to talk to that's just not true at all someone could be an amazing person they could be so amazing to their friends and treat everybody around them so well but be so terrible to you as a partner i remember when i was dating someone who was genuinely like a good friend to other people like all his friends would just talk about oh, wow he's so amazing he's so caring you know he would do a lot for them he would make sure he's like always there for them and he was never there for me but i would keep telling myself like you know maybe it's me because he's like an amazing friend like look at how he loves and cares for his friend like clearly i'm doing something wrong for him not to love and care about me like this but in reality he had an avoidant attachment style because relationships and friendships they are two completely different things okay because relationships they take a lot more sacrifice they take a lot more emotional vulnerability and friendships you know they'll still be there like even if you aren't calling them every day and when you're in a relationship, it also kind of unpacks a lot of maybe unhealed trauma within you that you might not even realize you have. Romantic relationships are very similar to like a parent-child relationship. So if you have like a bad relationship with your parents or something, that might come out when you feel love again in a romantic relationship because it reminds you of that. You should not try to make excuses up for people, okay? You need to take in consideration how you feel. That is the most important thing when being in a relationship. Prioritize your feelings because they are valid and they are trying to tell you something. So if you're constantly upset or sad or angry, it's your body telling you like something is wrong because you're just trying to protect yourself. Number four, don't date the bad boy. You're not gonna fix him, especially to all my Wattpad girlies out there who love the dark and brooding, tatted man. Just because you give him a lot of love and affection does not mean he's gonna wanna change and be the best man ever for you, okay? That's just literally not realistic because people are not going to change for other people. People are going to change for themselves. And if someone does not wanna change, they are not going to change for you at all. Your partner should not be like a science project to you. You should not have the goal to be like, well, just because he feels like he can't commit to other people doesn't mean he can't commit to me, you know? I can fix that. I can be the solution to all that problems because whatever problems that that man has, that probably goes way back, you know, deeper to childhood. You should be with someone who makes you feel secure and safe. You should not be with someone who keeps you on the edge of your seat and wondering, oh, how are they going to be today? Know your boundaries and know your worth and do not try to waste your energy on someone who does not want your energy at all. You are there to support your partner, but you are not there to fix them, okay? because you cannot keep giving all your energy to someone because you won't have any energy left for yourself. Number five, older does not mean wiser. And I am so serious about this because I feel like TV shows and movies, they romanticize the heck out of like the older, younger relationship. Like, can we talk about Pretty Little Liars for a second? Like Ezra and Arya. I was in middle school watching Pretty Little Liars. I was obsessed with them. I just feel like the show portrayed them as such a cute, romantic couple. And because of shows like that, a lot of girls just have an attraction to older men because when I moved to New York City, let me tell you the amount of girls that I knew that were dating older men was crazy. And I'm not talking like, you know, a few years older. I'm talking like 10 to 20 years each gap to each their own, okay? Everybody has their preference. And I'm not saying like all older and younger relationships are terrible because there are some that could work. If you are gonna take that route at all, be very careful. You have to think to yourself, why is this like 40 year old man dating me 20 something years old? Why he can't date someone else his own age or why he's choosing to date someone so much younger than him. When I talk to a lot of my friends who date older guys, 
guys their main thing is like oh you know he's very stable he's settled he's very mature guys our age like they just couldn't be as mature as that they couldn't be as settled as that and that is just so not true just because maybe they make money maybe they have a job does not mean that they are more mature and capable in any way to be in a serious healthy relationship a lot of these older guys are dating younger girls because they know that these girls look up to them and they like that and they think that they can do whatever they want and act however they want because these girls will still listen to them and want to be with them. We'll literally talk to girls and they're like, yeah, I'm dating this guy. He's like 40 years old and he completely ghosted me though and he tells me I'm like so mature as well. But I'm like, girl, he does not think that. He doesn't think you're mature if he's ghosting you. Number six, you're not going to get the closure you want. In fact, more times than not, you're not going to get the closure you even deserve. Breakups or even your situationship ending those are so complicated and it deals with a lot of different emotions that if someone's breaking up with you sometimes they don't even know how to say it they don't know how to like compile all those feelings into words or what I see what happens a lot is people know that they're the reason why the breakup is happening or they're the problem but they don't want to admit to themselves that they're the problem so they blame everything on you or you might not even get an in-person breakup you might just get a text you might get a FaceTime call whatever it is sometimes you want more and you want that happy ever after even though you guys aren't going to be together you still want that ending that's just not gonna happen <laughs> seriously because something i've learned is that the breakup is the closure the fact that this person is not in your life anymore that is the closure you need you do not need all the reasons as to why they're breaking up with you because they've made their decision and it's for you to just like reflect on the relationship and think like you know maybe where did things go wrong what did i do wrong what did they do wrong learn that lesson and move on or if the relationship ended badly you just want to have the last word to be like ha huh, screw you i win putting your energy on trying to get that last word or get your revenge after the breakup that's just gonna use up more of your mental energy and like thinking of them more than you even need to i used to want closure for my breakups i was like oh my god like i literally need this in order for me to feel satisfied but the reason why i was thinking about it so much was just because i was literally craving that closure i really wanted to get my last word in and once i stopped worrying about getting that closure i completely stopped caring i forgot number seven you will argue a lot there is literally a point in my life where i thought that if me and a partner did not argue that meant that we were in a healthy relationship but in reality it's like the opposite if you are not like disagreeing with your partner it's probably because neither of you are communicating how you feel. And when I say argue, I don't mean like fighting and yelling at each other because that's also not healthy. I don't even like to call them arguments. I like to call it like a very emotionally intense discussion. <laughs> Our intentions are just to try to understand each other and we might have two very different viewpoints on things, but we just need to find a compromise. But me and my boyfriend, we have so many emotionally intense conversations, like at least once a month, we both speak up on how we feel. In order to have a healthy relationship, you need to communicate those things or else they're just gonna be pent up inside you and you're gonna end up resenting your partner. These arguments are very mentally draining, okay? I totally understand that, but they're very important to have in order to better understand your relationship and also better understand yourselves. A lot of times after an argument, I learn so much about, you know, maybe my flaws and what I can improve on in myself and, you know, why I was even bothered in the first place. Me and my partner just had a little emotionally intense discussion the other day. It was me like feeling like my needs were not met. And then I reflected on it and I realized, oh, I'm bothered that my needs aren't met because I'm a people pleaser and I never say what I even want because I try so hard to accommodate other people's needs. And if I never said that something was bothering me like that, I would never have learned that. And that thing would continue to bother me and I would continue to just be upset at my partner and he wouldn't even know what I'm upset about. There's no winning or losing when it comes to like arguing your partner because you two are a couple, you are on the same team. I actually got a template the other day of how to communicate how you feel in a non threatening way and non-aggressive way. If something is bothering you, you should say, I feel blah, blah, blah when this happens. And I would appreciate it if you could blah, 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 ask them, is that okay with you? Or how do you feel? Or can you do that for me? So you give them the space 
to reply rather than you just like telling them what to do. Number eight, love can be boring. Love is not this super passionate, intense feeling all the time for someone. Love is just choosing that person through everything. Love can be you two just cooking a meal together. It can be you two sitting in bed scrolling together. It can be you two arguing and then making up afterwards. It's your job to push through those boring moments to find passion and joy in it again. I think it's honestly very romantic when partners do very boring mundane activities together and still are able to enjoy each other's companies during that because that's just what life is you know life isn't always fun and exciting and spontaneous number nine there's no such thing as a soulmate piggybacking off of what i just said love is about choosing someone that you are willing to do life with and put the effort in there is no such thing as that one person that is meant for you it is just all about the right person at the right time but when you hold on to this idea of a soulmate you are completely removing the concept of breaking up even if you are with someone for 50 plus years, you never know. Like anything could happen and that person could not be in your life anymore. And if you think that that person is the only person for you, that is, will make you really sad. You won't be open to finding love again. We need to accept the fact that breakups can happen no matter how long you've been together. And it doesn't mean it's your fault. Don't put so much pressure on that one true love. Especially if you are dating for the first time, we think that they are our one true love because we've never felt this way before. And number 10, you can't control what happens. Relationships just deal with so many complex emotions and you never know what someone's going through. You never know like what is going through someone's head. It honestly brought me a lot of ease when I learned and accepted that I just don't have control over things because I'm a very anxious person and I feel like I really want to control things. Letting the universe do its thing and let things happen was the best thing that I could do for myself. And it allowed me to learn to detach from people and not be super emotionally involved if I shouldn't be. Like I remember one time I was dating someone and it was going really well. Like we went on a few dates and just randomly one day completely ghosted. I was like, oh my God, did he die? He didn't die by the way. He was posting fine. Like definitely was still alive. But because I knew that I can't control what happens and people just make decisions, not because of me, you know, he could have ghosted me for a lot of different reasons. It didn't have to be so personal. I was able to let that go very easily and just move on and date other people. But if I was trying to control people, I would have probably been super affected by this. I would have asked why he ghosted me. I probably would have constantly texted him if I didn't hear from him. But there is no guarantee when it comes to dating. You know, some people might be ready for dating at one point and then another second they're not ready. It's okay because you you will find the one for you at the right time. I genuinely do believe it's just all about being able to get the experience, putting yourself out there, being able to allow yourself and be vulnerable and be open to relationships and dropping your ego. Dating is a beautiful thing. I told some of you guys to send in some positive affirmations to end this episode with, so we ended on good vibes. Someone said, I am so grateful for my most amazing husband. I am so happy for you. Someone else said, I'm grateful for my friends who hold me accountable for my actions and decisions. That sounds like amazing friends and I love that for you. Someone else said I am grateful for my brother because he always encourages me to do my best. Sibling love is honestly so cute. It's rare to find but it's amazing if you have that. Someone else said I am the luckiest girl in the world which is one of my favorite affirmations. I want to do something different and start ending every episode with a little journal prompt that you guys can journal about or write in the comments and share with everybody and I will read it in the next episode. This week's journal prompt is about writing down what you are looking for in a partner, what you need, what are you wanting to receive, what is this partner able to provide to you. Describe your perfect partner to you and if you feel comfortable then comment below but anyways I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode and I will see you on the next Mindful Monday. Bye.